take all the tires off. Why? Are you going to put them back on? <laughs> <laughs> no, you can do that. No, no. I want to check all your spoke tensions. Put that on there. So you're going to record me doing all your tires and not help me? <laughs> Your I can wheels. We have a lot going on in today's video, which is brought to you by Masterworks, where I'm going to be presenting a lot of details and data to you on these three wheels via an expert mechanic's point of view, 18 different speed tests, with one run in particular telling quite the story and I'm sure a bit of heckling. So hopefully by the end of this video, you can determine what sort of value you get from a cheap set of Chinese carbon rims, like these I can Aero 50 discs, valued at 600 170 USD versus a more expensive Chinese carbon rim being these new to market Windspace branded Lun, Luan, something like that. D45s, which are valued at 1300 USD, which now have a staggered profile. We have 46 millimeters at the front and we have a 54 millimeter at the rear, which is intended to improve handling and steering during crosswind conditions, given the fact most of the rider weight should be on the rear of the bike. And for all those hyper fans out there, we'll be bringing in the predecessor to those wheels over there, the Windspace Hyper 50 millimeters, which are valued at 1200 USD, which you can still buy. So hopefully in addition to comparing those wheels at the end of this video, you can decide whether it's worthwhile upgrading or spending the $100 USD more for the upgraded version versus the old version. So let's fold it over. So no. what happens is your inner tube will start to eat away in that corner and you'll get punches. <laughs> Say it with trust That's it. If you use one of those, they clip in perfectly. So that's a really good example okay. to use those instead. Cost a little bit more, but they are way better. Pro tip. In regards to nipples for me, I, when you look at the nipples and how they connect to the rim, they run a shallower nipple section. That's what it seems. I just put a vernier on it before. On the new one? Yeah. If you have a longer or a, a normal nipple, like what you've got on the iCans, you have an aerodynamic disadvantage in effect to obviously anything that's protruding here. Yeah, you haven't got that aerofoil working for you as well. That's an eye can. Conventional nipple. Love a bigger nipple. <laughs> <laughs> Look, the main thing from, from my perspective is working on them day and day out. It doesn't really bother me if I have to take the tires and tubes and everything off, but yeah. here's a great example. So the speed test, where I feel like I have one juicy item to share with you. And if you're after info on how I do these speed tests, info below, but just know everything is the same, right down to the same tires and tubes. The only thing that is different are the wheels, sometimes my average wattage per segment, and I do try and pick the lowest wind day possible, ideally zero wind. There was a little bit of wind that crept in on a couple of these segments. As you'll see from these screenshots that I take before each run, I prioritize the hill climb because it's nicely protected. So speed test number one is roughly a one and a half kilometer climb, average gradient of 3.6% at 350 watts times three runs on each wheel. Interestingly here, the ICANs just outperformed both hypers. So that has a stuck on tubeless tape. Yep. Just like this one. Yep. Right? That one up there has that conventional tape. Yep. Now that's great because you just pop that off easily and if you had to come in from the top, yep. you could get in and actually service those no drama whatsoever. The proper way of doing it is take the whole rim tape off, you put a whole new one back on. So there's a cost involved in that. These guys are running clearance, so they're not they're still crossing the spokes. Yep. The notable difference is that yeah, they've got a, a, an air gap between the spokes, so they're not using any shoulder support. Yeah, I mean you could go really down a rabbit hole with information like this. So yes, there is. See from a wheel building perspective, when you have something when it's touching, you do get shoulder support so you can run a different blade of spokes they've done two design differences here they've changed the, the hub nut where the where the spoke comes into the hub there's a receiving nut when you run a normal hub nut in here or you have a normal cylindrical style spoke they can just turn freely so when people are doing wheel trues or they're tensioning their spokes or they're just riding them and they're settling the spokes can actually move and therefore obviously change your spoke tension so that's the old one so it's just a normal cylindrical style head and then the new wheels have flats machined into the top of their hub nut so it's stopping that from twisting they've probably done this to stop noise maybe maybe they've done that for their design principle okay. all conventional spokes like a normal well, wheel well, what does the eye can have does that have shoulder support yeah you could go into any bike shop in the country and order or i can custom cut spokes here so i can make you a spoke yep. to whatever length you can walk in with a weird wonderful chinese wheel and i can make you a spoke if you come in for this yep. i cannot make up a spoke right on the spot. You've got to use their spokes. Yeah. Do they give you spare spokes? Yeah, they do. Yeah. They do. Okay, okay, cool. yeah. Today's video sponsor is something a little bit different, but something I'm paying a lot of attention to given the fact my wife Alice and I's savings are being eroded by the day because of inflation. And even during my research on the ICANs and the wind spaces, both Chinese-based companies 
I ran into a lot of articles about the Chinese economy collapsing and how it could devastate the global economy. So if a bank account is losing money to inflation and markets are headed for more turmoil, then how are we supposed to make our money work for us? So we can buy more bike parts. You can do what eight out of 10 ultra high net worth figures are already doing and look at alternative assets such as contemporary art with an average appreciation of 33% annually. Last time inflation was this high. Our performing gold, real estate and the S&P 500 during the same period. That is why Masterworks, today's video sponsor, is bringing contemporary art to investors without needing a huge outlay. They do all the work, including selecting the artist, they purchase the art, and they securitize it. In other words, making it investment grade. Keen to skip the Masterworks waiting list and get involved in this fine art investing straight away? Check out the link in the video description. Very nice on this. Okay, how do you know so that? Just on a, a, an aspect of feeling it, right? right? So you can kind of tell, pop the caps off and check that in a second. So oh. these feel pretty crap, to be honest. Right. They don't feel nice you can hear it can hear it yeah so that is not as hell again how you're going to feel that in real world terms you're not you can feel it, it pulses you already got rust happening in there <clears throat> so if you came into us and we were selling you this wheel pull them out i double check these kind of things i'd grease the end of that cap okay, just yeah. to give it a bit of a, a waterproof finish yeah. even though you've got a sealed bearing to a degree that water is getting in there so yeah. if you just put a tiny bit of grease in there okay. it makes such a difference okay. just from the first six months so this is the one you probably use the most right so if you can get your iron in there you so much restriction there is in that bearing it doesn't turn free if you do that you can kind of see a real life use so the original hyper 50s but first up a little on wind spaces history which i find pretty interesting they've been around since 2008 so similar sort of age to ican although i know they originated as a manufacturing company and have recently stepped up their game to be more in consumer focus so the old hypers these are disc brake with a 50 millimeter profile on each wheel inner rim width 19 millimeters 26 millimeters external and you could but what would happen is you get that light bulb scenario so yeah. if you run a bigger tire each their own if you're not phased about aerodynamics if you're just doing normal riding and yeah. you're not doing your speed test or this kind of stuff if you're just riding there's nothing wrong with running a light bulb style to where it's bulging out a little bit total acclaimed weight is 1455 grams i weighed them in at 1475 proprietary carbon spokes using a two to one ratio so we have seven spokes on this side and 14 spokes on this side and if you can look or see they do this because there's less bracing angle on this side to accommodate the hub and obviously the drivetrain, and this is said to create a more efficient and stiffer rim. Additionally, on price, we have $1,200 USD and $100 USD for postage to most regions, and they do have a free option too, if you're willing to be patient. Are you gonna feel that left-right wobble like that? Probably not, but I would definitely chew that wheel. So again, so here's the spoke tensions, and all it's doing is taking the blade of the spoke, obviously releasing a pressure. What we're looking for here, I mean, every brand has a different suggested kilogram of tension. So for instance, this spits out a number, say it's 20. You look at the spoke profiling on their chart and you can compare all their spoke tensions of where it should be in reference. Most shops would have this. If yep. they don't, I'd be taking it for another shop. And most people could buy their own one. If you do it up too tight, you're gonna crack the rim. If you do it too low, you're gonna end up with your spokes breaking down here. Speed test number two, TT like you mean it. A 1.8 kilometer false flat decline segment at 400 watts. And here, it is simply too close to call. And again, so we're looking at, you can look at up and down movement or concentricity as well. I can eye it off. Slightly out, but that's pretty good. You're not gonna feel that. It's not really affecting anything from a real life day-to-day -day use. So slow, it slows down. You definitely tell the bearings aren't that good, right? You could literally just bring it into your local shop. You can knock all those bearings out, replace them with new bearings, and it'd be perfectly fine. A normal bearing's probably like 20, 25 bucks of a bearing. You know, if you want something fancier, then yeah, you're gonna spend probably, you know, a couple of hundred bucks more. Okay. Again, yeah. a wag. A wheel alignment cage, <laughs> yeah. So your dish is perfect. You Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> this is the older wheel, right? You You've dropped no like serious <laughs> tension on that. Are you saying I'm not producing enough watts? Correct. <laughs> I'm offended. I'm leaving. Being new, these ones are, I've only been used a couple of times. But you're going to get some settling, right? So with right. a new wheel, again, if you open those up and you don't have a reference point, you spin it, you're, you're not, not going to... You, you're not gonna do you see what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's exaggerated. It's That's the whole point of this. It's exaggerated. Yeah. So the new Hyper D45s. Once again, disc brake, rim profile, 46mm front, 54mm rear. 21 millimeter internal width now and a 27.6 millimeter external. So you can now, without disrupting aerodynamics, get 28 millimeter tires in there. Total weight, 1,421 grams, although I weighed them in at 1,450. Same spokes, price is now $1,300 USD with the same postage options. Bearings are a lot better than that. It spins a lot freer, doesn't it? So that's perfectly fine. See, that spins way better than that one. So it's newer, correct? Yeah, yeah. yeah I can make it. Oh, okay. <laughs> 
Yeah, right. So it's ever so slightly out again on that one. Again, phenomenal. You would, I mean, it's not not a concern. You want it to work within within ten. So it's like actually pretty good for a new one. That's not too bad. I would actually say it's probably out a little bit. So it's sitting drive side to the right a little bit too far, and he's come back to left. We're talking less than a mil. Again, yeah. normal. Don't yeah. worry about it. Okay. This is probably so even if the wheel is just hovering. Look at that. The whole axle's turning. So the bearings aren't even spinning. It's yeah. rumbling a lot. Yeah. yeah. So they're actually, I mean, they're actually pretty good. To be honest, that's pretty good. So a little bit about the iCans, a Chinese-based company that specialize in manufacturing of bikes and wheels. It's been around since 2009 and in my opinion have developed quite a solid reputation. What we have here are the ICANN Aero 50 discs with 50 millimeter depth on each rim. Inner width is a touch over 18 millimeters, outer width 25 millimeters. So they don't really suit anything more than a 25 millimeter profile tire. We have Sapham X-Ray spokes, 24 front, 24 rear there, alloy spokes. Total acclaimed weight of 456 grams and I weighed them at 450. On price, 600 170 USD for the wheels, although postage to Australia, 240 USD, postage to the USA, 188 USD, and postage to the UK, 155 USD. So for me, in little old Australia, these wheels are coming in at 910 USD dollars, roughly $1,300 AUD. So all of a sudden, these cheap wheels aren't coming across overly cheap. In addition, something that you should be aware of is if you have a manufacturing defect on these wheels, which have a two-year warranty, as do the Hypers with the ICANs, if you find the defect after 30 days, you're paying for postage. But then the bearings have gone to shit, so... so. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no play in the bearing, right? So, so that your viewers know, like, there's no play. It's yeah. just that they're rough, they're rumbling. So yeah. again, I mean, if I was going to budget wheel, you'd probably get those. You've got usability for the nipples, like easy to do at home. You've got normal spokes. You've got a conventional bearing that you can knock out and put new ones in and yeah. upgrade them for maybe a couple hundred bucks. You could pimp the hubs up and you put out with a really good wheel for not much money and take that stuff. Yeah, yeah. How much is ICANN paying you? There'll be someone in the comments saying that oh, ICANN rang him up last night from China. Okay, so this rear one's got a, you would true that. That one's gone out. Right. Compared to any brand, I don't think that's a problem. Zip, fork and campy, anything. They all settle and they need to be trued slightly. So I don't okay. see that as being a major problem. Rear bearings on this feel not too bad. Again, eh, this is slightly out, minimal. Passable, 100%, no drama. So serviceability wise. Segment number three, TT like you mean it in reverse. A 2.15 kilometer false flat incline segment where once again, too close to call, but it's speed test number four, where I feel like I have some juice for you. The two hypers, you can just pull these off. They pop like a cork. The design on this one, you've got a lip seal here. It's a 6903 bearing, so it's a 17 mil axle, 03 stole bearing. So that can be replaced with any aftermarket bearing that you, you could find. So it has the multiple of engagements, and then you have six pulls. Now these are pull, P-A-W-L, and that's your pull springs. Now depending on the brand of the hub and how it works, each time it clicks, obviously, that's how it works, click, click. That multiplied by the amount of those will give you a quicker engagement. I think these have a very high engagement. Same free hub body, six pulls, same springs. Doesn't look like they've changed anything there. Shallower style bearing, but it's still an 03 style bearing, but it's okay. smaller. These are not, you cannot pull this free hub um, easily off. So your axle is threaded together. So with this one, you will have to do some more tooling. So you gotta unthread that cap and then you push the whole thing off. You see what I mean? So it slides That's off that way. Three pulls. Okay, this is where you can tell it's cheaper. This is a basic free hub body. I can also tell just from holding it, it is a lot, a lot heavier. Right. So even though this may be lightweight, this piece yeah. is super heavy compared to that. Right. Even though it's different cassettes, yes, blah, blah, blah. Just from doing this all day all day long, you can tell the difference. This one runs a spring which runs radially around the outside. That is your pull. Obviously, you can see that working. And your spring is actually running all the way around the inside. What often happens with this type of free hub is when they get really dirty, the springs snap. Bring that one spring is holding all three together. These ones here are running individual springs. So if you were to snap that spring and that pull fails, yeah. I mean, it's going to make a mess inside. But if that does fail, it tends to just drop away and then all five of the other ones are going to work. When this one goes, you'll find that you'll lose the engagement and it will just spin on you. From a performance perspective, that's better, that's better. But there's not really any change except for the engagements between the old and the new. And then if you look at this one, you can see this has less engagements. No, not, not as much buzz. More manufacturing costs. There's more things going on here than there is in this one. So speed test number four is a descent. 1.64 kilometers in length, averaging 5.4% gradient, where I continue my 300 watts from the previous segment into a signpost and then stop pedaling and resume the exact same descending position. 
the times. Here are clearly in favor of the hypers and I actually felt something happen here. The descent hits roughly 10% for a while and there you tend to gather solid speed. Both the hypers hit max speeds of 87 kilometers per hour. However, with the ICANs, when I was descending, I kind of felt like they maxed out at 80 kilometers per hour, turned out to be 82 kilometers per hour, but I felt like they could have or should have kept going and they just simply didn't. Additionally, swapping the wheels over, one big thing I noticed was the hypers definitely feel like a stiffer, more aggressive wheel and the ICANs feel a lot softer, making the T1500 behind me more comfortable. So ultimately it depends on what type of riding you like to do. These speed tests take me a long time to put together. So if you're getting value from this or this video, if you could give it a like, helps the channel out, I would greatly appreciate it. Today, you've got bikes to service. We've got stuff to do yeah, and, yeah. Um, and your bill is racking up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, mate, much appreciated. All right, mate, have a good day.